Oh yeah, let's do this. All right, the static modifier. The static modifier is used to declare a static member, one which belongs to the class itself rather than any one specific object. I have a class named car. Cars have a field named model and a constructor to assign a model when we instantiate a car object. And I have two car objects, car one and car two. Car one is a Mustang, car two is a Corvette. Here's the situation. Let's say that we're going to have a race, but we need to keep track of how many cars are instantiated that are entering our race. One way in which we can do that is to create a static field to keep track of how many cars are created. So let me show you what this looks like with a non-static field first. So let's declare an integer variable named number of cars to keep track of how many cars we create. So I will declare this, but not yet assign it. And within my constructor, I will increment number of cars by one. Remember that with constructors, you're not limited to only assigning values to fields. You can do like any sort of code that you want. Remember that it's just another kind of method. Okay, so every time we instantiate a car object, we will increment number of cars by one. And then let's display number of cars. So we need to access this in a non-static way by typing the name of a car object like car one dot followed by the name of the field but it looks like we need to make this public. Public int number of cars. Car one dot number of cars. Let's do the same thing for car two. Car two dot number of cars. Now you would think that the number of cars would be two, right? And that's where you're wrong. Number of cars for both car one and car two are both one because each car object has their own copy of the number of cars field. And within the constructor, when we increment each copy of number of cars, well, it's only ever going to be a maximum of one. So one way in which we could fix that is to change this field to a static field after public type static, public static int number of cars. And we can no longer access this field in a non-static way by typing the name of an object followed by the name of the field. We would have to access this field in a static way by typing the name of its class followed by the name of the field. So type the name of the class car followed by, you know, dot, then the name of the field. So this field now belongs to the car class and no one object has complete ownership of it. It's kind of like they're all sharing the same variable. And let's try this again. So the number of cars that we have created is two. Now, just to test everything, let's create a third car. We have a third racer within our race. So car three will be a, what about a Lambo? And we now have created three cars. So again, by preceding this field with the static modifier, the class now owns it. We can also apply the static modifier to a method as well. Public static, and we'll create a method to begin our race. Let's call this start race. So we don't want each object to be able to start the race on their own terms, right? So it would be better if the car class itself has a start race method. So then if we would like to begin our race, we can access it in a static way. The race has begun. Then if I need to invoke this method, I type the name of the class car dot the name of the static method start race, then a set of parentheses to invoke it. And this should now begin our race. The race has begun. And then you can also apply the static modifier to a class itself, but then you can't instantiate objects from this class. You can see that we're getting errors. Cannot declare a variable of static type car. So that's kind of like the deal with the math class. In order to use a method of the math class, we wouldn't create like a math object, right? Like math, math one equals new math, right? And then we wouldn't type math one dot round to round a number. It's a lot easier just to use directly the math class and type math dot round. So that's kind of the idea behind a static class. You can't create objects from a static class. And we kind of learned about that in the video on classes. Well, in conclusion, the static modifier can be applied to a field, a method, or a class itself. Anything that is declared static now belongs to the class, and no one object has ownership of it.
So that is the static modifier. If this video helped you out, help me out by smashing that like button, drop a random comment down below, and well, yeah, that's the static modifier in C-sharp.